this wet and soggy day. Hopefully none of you have water in your basements like Pastor Roberto does today. So we will be praying for him later, for sure. Um, but even though it's soggy and wet on the outside, we are filled with joy and fresh air and the Holy Spirit here. So we welcome you all to this service, whether you're here or online. And now if you would, please stand if you're able and join me for the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. We will sing to God and bless God's name forever and ever. We will declare God's mighty acts. Let us worship, singing of God's righteousness. If you're able to remain standing, please, and join us for hymn 301.
You may be seated, and will the youth please come forward? So how was Sunday school today? What'd you learn? <laughs> Wait, how, hold on. What was that? We learned about like the wheel and how Jesus is the center of the wheel. Yeah. Jesus is the center of the wheel. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What else did you learn? That uh, we, we had like a book. Uh-huh. We um, read about um, someone who made... Um, real world or something so someone who made an amusement park right yes and that that, that everyone who went to the amusement park didn't know that he was the creator of the amusement park right yes. and then to find out that to meet the man who created that park was pretty special right yes yeah well so the lesson today in sunday school we're going to carry through um our students are carrying on the theme of discipleship and so today i want to talk to you a little bit more about being at the center um and first i'm going to read you uh hebrew do you mind? You don't want to read Hebrew? I didn't want to read Hebrew either, but ministers have to learn Hebrew. I don't know how to read it. Well, you start from the right and you go to the left. What? Yeah, it's really weird. Uh huh. Um, so I'm just going to translate it as I'm, I'm reading it, all right? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. All right, actually, I'm not reading the Hebrew. I kind of know this one by heart. Mm -hmm. But here's the cool thing. See all these characters? These are all the letters in Hebrew. This is not upside down, by the way. Okay, this is, the, this is literally what Hebrew looks like. And ministers have to learn Hebrew and Greek when we're in seminary. But what I never knew, and maybe you all don't know either, is that 24 words from the bottom to the center, 24 words from the top to the center is the most important phrase. You know what it is? For I am with you. Isn't that cool, the way that worked out? So 24, no matter, no matter how you go from the bottom to the top or the top to the middle, you'll see for I am with you. And so God wants you to know that no matter where you go, whether you're at a playground or whether you're in Sunday school or whether you're in school or whether someone's unkind to you or your bike breaks or things don't go well for you in some way or another, God is still with you because it's right here in the text. And I want you to keep remembering that as uh, Miss Lisa, Lisa and Miss Rafaela continue to work with you on that. And I want you all to remember that God is with you, always. All right? I'm going to pray first, and then you repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, love you. we love you. Thank you, Thank you for loving us. For loving us. Thank, you Thank you that you, that you are, always are always with us. No matter where we go, no where we go. What, we do, what we do, sleeping, sleeping eating, eating talking, talking and, especially praying. and especially praying please help those, please help those who are sick, who are sick sad, sad hungry, hungry or lonely, or lonely. Amen. amen all right thank you so much <laughs> friends a lot of times when we're going through difficulties or we're not our best selves, we forget that God is with us in the good, the bad, and the ugly. So friends, before we pray our prayer of confession, let's get our hearts and our souls right and come before God in all honesty so God can then release us from our sins. Let us pray the prayer of confession which is printed in your bulletin. Gracious God, forgive us when we grumble and complain against your goodness as the Israelites did in the desert, as the elder brother did to his father, as the workers in the field did to the landowner. 
We judge the way your gifts according to our standards. We often question your fairness instead of receiving your grace with thanksgiving and joy. Help us to see your world through your eyes and with your spirit of generosity and grace that we may welcome the chance to serve the world you created as your disciples. In your grace and mercy, forgive us when we don't, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now take in a deep breath and let it out. Take another deep breath and let it out. That is the ruach, the wind, the spirit of breath of God that cleanses us from our sins. And as the psalmist tells us, as far as the east is from the west, God removes our sins from us and we can live free again as grateful and beloved children. Thanks be to God. Amen. I went off script. Sorry about that. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that God has made. By your grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you. Please do share a sign of peace with one another.
Oh, such wonderful time <laughs> with the peace. Now you are. Okay, friends. You may have noticed that we shifted some things in the bulletin, and so Roberto and I are now focusing at this point in the service on things that are not announcements, but everything that is relating to mission. So the first thing you'll see on the back of your bulletin is a reminder about the peacemaking offering that we're carrying through until next week. Again, this is a special offering from the PCUSA. 25% of that offering will stay here, and um, the session has decided to make that contribution towards the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, which unfor unfortunately is still a great need um, in this country, in this state, in this county. So uh, do what you can to make that contribution and add to it. Um, in addition, um, deacons are meeting after worship today, after that glorious um, big tray of cookies that we have. Um, next week um, is also World Communion Sunday, so I encourage you to bring a friend who maybe has not experienced World Communion, and we're going to be doing something really cool. You'll be getting an email about it this week, so stay tuned. And also next week, um, after worship, those who are interested in helping organize and plan the ASH program will be meeting with Pastor Roberto. He's making some special uh, egg breakfast or something, so um, yes, come and, and join him. Where's that going to be? Here or? Here. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, Roberto, did I forget anything? No, you got it all. Well, praise the Lord. Okay, friends, then uh, let's pray together the prayer of illumination, which is printed in your bulletin. Holy God, your, your word, word teaches, teaches us that, that all scripture, scripture is inspired by you, by you and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for, reproof, for, for correction, and, and for the training in righteousness. As we hear your word read and proclaimed today, today Speak, speak to, to us and inspire, inspire us that, that we may be proficient and equipped for every good work. work. Through, Through Jesus Christ, Christ the word made, made flesh. flesh. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Exodus. I'm reading the version of the inclusive um, translation of Exodus. The Israelites began to complain against Moses and Aaron there in the wilderness. The people of Israel said to them, if only we had died by Yahweh's hand in the land of Egypt, when we sat next to pots of meat and ate our bread until we were filled. But now you have brought the whole community out into this wilderness to die of hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, look, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people will go out and gather a day's portion every day so that I can test them to see if they will follow my instructions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading comes from the gospel of Luke, chapter 10. After this, Jesus appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is rich, but the workers are few. Therefore, I ask the overseer to send workers to the harvest. Be on your way and remember, I am sending you as lamb in the midst of wolves. Don't carry a walking stick or a knapsack. Wear no sandals and greet no one along the way. In whatever house you enter first, say, Peace be upon this house. If the people live peaceably there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking what they give you, for the laborer is worth a wage. Don't keep moving from house to house. In whatever city you enter, after they welcome you, eat what they said before you and heal those who are sick in that town. Say to them, the reign of God has drawn near to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Katie, can you lower the microphone just a tad? I think it's a little, thank you, great. I was young once. I, I was actually a child, I, you know. 
There is a line in the music of 1776, Marcello will know this. Uh, Benjamin Franklin smote the ground and out sprang George Washington, fully grown and on his horse. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't born that way, I was, I was a child. And in the school system in Italy, where I did my elementary and middle school, grades were given in numbers. Numbers, one through 10. 10 being the highest grade you can get. Except for, um, there, there was a thing, it would be, I guess, like uh, 10 plus, uh, which was dieci e lode, literally means 10 with praises. What a great concept, right? It's like not only uh, you get a perfect uh, score, perf perfect grade, you also get praised for it. That's a very European thing, I think. Much to my surprise, I discovered that the grading system in the US is based on letters. A, I suppose it's a 10, B is a nine, and A is a C. I don't know, help me out with this. Uh, maybe a seven is a D, and then uh, six is an E. Uh, I'm waiting for a reaction. There is no E. You know why there is no E in grading? Because E stands for excellent, and that's not exactly what that means. But there is an F, and at that point, if you got an F, you fail. This is all very confusing to me, by the way. Today, I would like us uh, all to get an F and actually succeed. Got it? Today, we're going to get an F, but we are going to succeed. We're not going to fail. As you know, in the month of September, we focused on discipleship. Today is the last Sunday in September. So we are going to kind of close it up in transition to the theme of next month, which is the theme of mission and outreach. If you were here last Sunday, you might remember that uh, Pastor Jen told us that the health of the church many times is measured in uh, three letters, right? A, B, C. A standi stands for attendance, right? So you were here, good. B for budget, yes, and C for? Children, that's right. She told us that it's better to measure the health of a church with a D for disciple. Thank you. All right. Today, I would like to add an F. F for faithful. Faithful disciples. What makes a faithful disciple? Well, is one that follows Jesus in thought, prayer, and in action. That's my own definition, I think, but I would uh, bet that a lot of uh, my colleagues in ministry would agree with that. As I said, in the month of October, we will focus on mission and outreach, which in some ways is discipleship in action. But before we get there, I thought we could reflect on the passage we just read from the Gospel of Luke the so-called descending of the 72. So let me give you some basics first. Jesus, are you, are you here with me? Yes? Jesus might, might have had only 12 male disciples that we know of. Yes? You know this, right? Yes? However, Jesus had many, many other disciples. The 12 are called the up. Uh, Apostles, yes, and the others are called the disciples. Many women among them, many supporters among them. So, fun fact number two, with very, very, very few exceptions, the disciples were ordinary people. No theologians among them, professional evangelists. They were just like the people of this church. Ordinary folk from all walks of life, gender, race, and age, who had very little in common except for one key thing. Any guesses what that might be? They were all followers of Jesus. 
That was the one thing they had in common. And there, my dear friends, it lies the key to discipleship. Following Christ works best when we follow with others. I'm going to say that again. Following Christ works best when we follow with others. When we share our very ordinary life with others. Not just on, in worship on Sunday morning, but in ordinary moments of life. Discipleship, in my view, is learning how to live the average day well, together, faithfully. You see, living life well together is discipleship. Sometimes it's intense, powerful, profound, oh, I don't know, incredibly uh, um, soul-wrenching, sometimes requires effort and sacrifice, many, many times brings immense amount of joy. Other times, well, you find yourself eating soup with some of the folks at the church, cleaning the attic, and watching a movie together. Ordinary stuff. You see, dear friends, a faithful discipleship is not a program. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle composed of very many elements. Yes, Bible studies. Yes, Bible studies are great. As a matter of fact, Pastor Jen and I are about to organize a series that will hopefully include some food, because what would Presbyterians do without it? And we'll be offering that very, very soon. Another component of, of faithful discipleship is reading, reflecting, meditating, contemplating the mysteries of our faith. We can do that on our own in the woods or at home or while, you know, running the vacuum cleaner. And then there's practicing what we study, what we reflect upon on our daily lives. As we grow together into more faithful disciples, not afraid to apply the principles of our faith, the very teachings of Jesus about grace, about forgiveness, about compassion, about respect for all of life and all of creation. <clears throat> Which brings me to the reading. At some point, at some point, we need to extend ourselves beyond the comfort of these walls and send 72 of us outside these walls. Are we prepared? Are we prepared? Well, let's look at that line. That line that really puzzles me. It goes like this. Don't carry a walking stick or a knapsack. Wear no sandals and greet no one along the way. In my mind, folks, that's just poor planning. Yes? No sandals? Ouch. Have you walked around Springfield lately? <laughs> like, no change of clothes? Yikes. No help in walking. Some of us need more help than others, right? That sounds risky to me. But maybe that's just a big metaphor to tell us that all we need to be faithful disciples, to be faithful followers of Christ inside and outside of these walls, is found in our own midst. All the planning that is needed is reliance on the Holy Spirit and the hospitality of our community. If you keep reading, it says, eat whatever they put in front of you. What I'm saying is that we have all that we need to be faithful disciples. A church community that supports each of its members with love, with help when needed. I heard somebody uh, got soup to Loretta when she got out of the hospital. Am I right? Somebody just showed up with soup. Yeah? Great, right? Well, that's an expression of discipleship in my book. So reliance on uh, the Holy Spirit, reliance on one another, radical hospitality for the newcomer. 
Folks, what we witnessed last Sunday, if you were here, you might agree with me. In my book, what we witnessed last Sunday was short and miraculous. Visiting family, being embraced as our own, sharing a meal prepared by many young hands, the hands, I might add, of young disciples. These young people are disciples, disciple in formation, but disciples nevertheless. What we witnessed last Sunday is the spontaneous, unplanned, unconditional act of faithful discipleship. Yes, the meal was planned. Thank you, Lisa, for that. You're really good at planning. I commend you for it. But who would exactly prepare and do what and serve what? That was just the Holy Spirit, if you ask me. Were you planning to have Louisa and Anne was the other child, right? No idea they were coming. And yet, five minutes later, they're scooping egg and, and sandwiches and bagels and so on. And then there's Charles at the end of the line going, enjoy, enjoy your brunch. The best part of that line, the end, right? Enjoy your brunch. Folks, every time we engage in faithful discipleship just like that, through our prayer for each other, through our attending of each other's needs, through extending hospitality, we proclaim the reign of God has drawn near. The reign of God has drawn near. Well, I hope we all can get an F for our efforts at discipleship. It's truly the best grade you can aspire to even better than a 10 with praise. F for faithfulness. Amen. Let us now stand and sing together our center in hymn 726. Will you come and follow me? We will sing verses 1 through 3 and then verse 5.
You may be seated. As it is our custom here, we'll pass the microphone around. Any volunteers to pass? Yeah, go ahead. And pray uh, for, for each other. Um, at the end of your prayer, please do say, this is my prayer, to which we will respond, this is our prayer. I'm going to start. I, I have a, a whole bunch of um, reasons to be grateful. Um, as I shared last week, my uh, niece, um, her name is Isabella, very beautiful name. She, she has come back to us, uh, and it was fantastic to, to get together with her last Sunday, and, um, um, and really, uh, last Saturday, rather, and, and really uh, spend some, some time catching up. And uh, um, this is my prayer. Anyone else? Um, I, have, I have two prayers. The first is um, a prayer of thanksgiving because my son Kyle's birthday was Thursday and he's All gonna right. crawl under the pew right now. Um, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's a prayer of, of joy and thanksgiving, and I also have a, a prayer for my other son, Ryan, who's going through something extremely emotional now, um, and I just wish I could take his pain away for him, and I hope that he lets the Lord into his heart and help him through this. This is my prayer. I saw that. You gave her the look. I saw that. It's like, don't, don't mention anything. Um, I have two things. On Thursday, there is a woman I called my mother. She's a Jewish woman. Um, she's still dear to me. She will be 96 years old. Wow. God I bless want her. the judge to pray for her and keep her more healthy. Her name is Miss Beatrice. Then today in Nigeria, my only brother, my senior brother, was ordained a knight at Methodist Church, mm. Knight of John Wesley in Methodist Church of Nigeria, I want us to thank God for calling him to his um, house to do more work for him. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Thank you for sharing that. I have uh, two uh, concerns. One is for my mom. Uh, for her to get better, and also for my sister, who has uh, some health concerns, and she's having surgery on Thursday. So I wish to f uh, for doctors to have uh, steady hands. Uh, this is my prayer. This is our prayer. I have a, a prayer of Thanksgiving. Um, I had kind of a rough... I've had a couple weeks that's been pretty rough at work, and I, f I found that there are a, f a couple of fellows that I work with that are Jehovah's Witness, which I find interesting, and it's very rare that you can actually sit down with, you know, somebody that you work with and have a level-headed conversation and know that um, you're supported no matter what. And his conversation with me um, made me feel um, very supported, and I felt happy, and we had a conversation. It was very much like your sermon today, Pastor Roberto, um, 
about how uh, I think people that are of the same thought that are one under God's kingdom that, you know, look to do the discipleship of him, um, they find each other and they work together. And it's my prayer that the people that have not yet found that find it. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. And what a beautiful prayer that is. By the way, when a, someone of, of a different faith uh, comes and, and wants to talk to you like a Jehovah's Witness, I said, I'll, I'll give you 10 minutes. You, you tell me your story. Give me 10 minutes, I'll tell you mine. And, and, and it, be, it becomes a dialogue, not a, not a you know, proselytizing one another. So just a little tidbit for you. Go um, ahead. I want to use this opportunity to thank um, the church for the prayers throughout my surgery, throughout my accident. Mm -hmm. um, the church was solidly behind me. Um, wonderful um, friend, father, um, sister. They were solidly behind my family. I thank every member of the church for your gift, your prayers. Um, I'll be going back to work on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. The doctor said, I am fit to go back to work now. Yeah. After staying three months at home. Yeah. Oh, without dog. a job and without pay. Yeah. It was not an easy journey. Yeah. But I thank all those that supported my family and I. May the good Lord continue to bless them. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Discipleship in action. There you have it. Anyone else? Yes. Um, yesterday I got a phone call from Nigeria. My mom, who, who's turned 93 last month, she's not feeling well. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm hoping that God is going to continue to be with her, give her, you know, another 10 years or more. So this is my prayer. This is our prayer. All right, let us pray. We have been praying, really. But God of grace and God of glory, we come before you in, in prayers today. You, you just heard uh, this congregation um, speak their heart. Um, we come assured and comforted by the promise that when we do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Lord, the burdens and challenges of life sometimes leave us without the right words, speechless sometimes. But we thank you that even as we pray, Jesus prays for us and with us to be one, to be disciples together and strengthened for the ministry to which you call us, Lord. I pray for the people who have been named in worship today, the names uh, that we keep in our prayer list and uh, uh, the names we carry in our hearts, some of the names that are only known to you. I pray for Loretta and for Eunice as they recover um, and, and try to get better. I, I pray for Linda's uh, surgery coming up and I pray for birthdays wonderful reminders that we're alive. I pray for the mothers in their 90s, uh, the ones uh, whose names we heard today and, and my own, for their health, for their resilience, for their wisdom as they continue to age gracefully. I pray for ordination, for those uh, uh, pivotal moments in the life of our uh, brothers and sisters and colleagues, uh, uh, when, uh, when we aspire to, to serve in other ways. And I ask for your blessing on uh, those moments as well. I pray for dialogue. I pray for the ability to hear each other's stories and the stories of those who have a different view of the world, a different view of, of you, God, 
those who haven't made up their mind about you, God. Uh, I pray for dialogue. I pray for openness so that our differences may be a conduit to unity, not division. I pray for your church in every place that we may bear faithful witness to your amazing grace in our lives and in the world. Even when uh, things in the world seem to go sideways, we think of the people of Libya still recovering uh, their dead from the flooding. We think of the people of our own country, the East Coast, battered by mountains of water coming all at once, destroying uh, people's lives and livelihoods. And yet in all of that, we praise you, Lord, for your grace and uh, your support and your uh, sustaining us, for your undying, undying witness through the life of Jesus Christ. I pray for the mission, the ministry, and the work of this congregation. May we always serve with a spirit of generosity rather than with a sense of scarcity, the scarcity that comes from looking to ourselves uh, within these walls and not to the larger community. Again, I pray for the people of the world whom you have created in your own image, whatever opinion we hold of one another. I pray for those who are in dangerous place through no fault of their own, for those who are experiencing this, uh, these disasters, like Morocco, for those uh, who are searching uh, a better life for themselves and their children, for those who cross borders of seeking refuge and seeking a different way of life, uh, away from violence, away from destruction, away from lack of opportunity. Almighty God, help us to live lives worthy of the calling to which you call us. Remind us that we together are the body of Christ. When one member suffers, may we all share in the suffering and extend the loving care of Christ. When one member is honored, when they rejoice, let us all rejoice together. Lord God, help us to live, love, and serve as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ in your kingdom. We offer these and all our prayers in his precious name. The name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to give up our gifts and our tithes and our offerings to the glory of God for all that God has done, is doing, and will do in our future, in this church, and in our lives, and for all of those around us who we're called to be faithful to. So friends, now give generously and joyously.
Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we thank you for the hands and the hearts who have given gifts this day and every day up to this day. Bless these gifts now, O oh God, and show us how to use them for your good, to build disciples and to be faithful to you in your call. We also thank you for the gift of voice that can sing parts in a cappella, which so few choirs can do. We thank you for all the gifts of music and preaching and soul and even technology that helps us stay connected with one another near and far. And for all these things, O oh God, we praise your name and let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please remain standing, if you would, for our last hymn, 740. For the benediction today, we are going to do what we've been doing uh, this month. So follow along, folks. Ready? God in my mind, God in my mouth, God on my left, God on my right, God in my heart. And now may the grace, the peace, and love of Christ, of God the Father, God the Parent, God, the Holy Spirit, be with you, remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.